Linear algebra matrix representation of linear transformations. Over the next few lectures, we are going to get into the meat of the matrix representation of linear transformations. If this first lecture will look at motivation and try and give an overview of the method and details that are to come in future lectures. Uh, first of all, what is a linear transformation? Well, there are a whole bunch of mathematical functions out there. One function might be adding 3. Another might be dividing by 7. What all these functions do is they map one set of numbers to another. E.g., the function adding 3 maps the number x to the number x plus 3. In the vector space world, one very common type of functions and a function that we're very interested in is the linear transformation. What this does is it maps vectors in the vector space U to the vector space V. But of course, it doesn't just do this willy-nilly just like the function adding 3, we have rules. What rules? Well, a li linear transformation T acts unsurprisingly linearly in that T... So the linear transformation applied to AX plus BY, where X and Y are vectors, A and B are scalars, is the same as the scalar A times the linear transformation T applied to the vector X plus B uh, of the linear transformation T applied to the vector Y. And what is this? We've seen this before. It's just saying that vector addition and scalar multiplication still work. Okay, now we have this concept of linear transformations in our mind. However, it's not that useful. We can't do much with it. However, if we can somehow represent this process using a matrix, then this will, it turns out, uh, allow us to explore much more about this process of linear transformations. So we want to represent this linear transformation in matrices. Why? Because it allows us to do much more math. Which, of course, can only be a good thing. However, there is a problem uh, matrices and linear transformations are not exactly the same thing. A linear transformation is a function between spaces. A matrix, on the other hand, is an object defined by the entries in its rows and columns. This problem is easily solved if we do one thing. If we already choose bases for vector spaces U and V, then we can represent a linear transformation by a matrix. So if we choose bases of vector spaces U and B, we can now represent a linear transformation by a matrix. If this isn't clear to you why this is the case, don't worry, we'll deal, that with, deal with that in upcoming lectures. Uh, in the next lecture, we introduce the idea of an ordered basis and also explain why choosing bases for vector spaces U and V provides the perfect circumstances to bring out the mathematical superweapon that is matrices. So in upcoming lectures we're going to first deal with bases and how allow us to use matrices. And then the lecture after that we're going to get into the maths 
of matrix representation. 